Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to episode 11 of Opening Basics. In this video we're going to continue looking at the, um, at the English opening. Um, I wanted to uh, finish up something with the, uh, the Four Nights variation that I looked at uh, in the last video. There was one uh, point, I, I made a mention of it in a comment, but uh, I should really show it to you. E4, I mean C, <laughs> C4, E5. Um, the uh, one of the ways to counter the English, just put that pawn on e5 and try and strike back in the center, which uh, white is neglecting. Knight c3, knight f6, so contesting control of the light squares. Knight f3, hitting the e pawn, and knight to c6, defending it. So this is the four knights variation of the English opening. And now the main move here is g3. And uh, there are lots of uh, different choices for uh, black here, and uh, one very interesting and tactical choice is knight to d4. And uh, what I forgot to uh, point out is that uh, it looks like this is hanging a pawn here, but if you uh, take the pawn, the move queen to uh, e7 here is very, uh, very, a very strong move. And in fact, this is uh, almost winning for uh, almost winning for black. At least the advantage shifts for black. So the first point is that if you uh, innocently say, okay, I've snagged a pawn, I'm just going to drop my knight back and I'm, everybody's happy, right? Well, <laughs> your opponent will be happy, but you won't be because knight <laughs> knight takes f3 is checkmate. The queen has got a pin on this pawn, so the knight can't be taken, and the king is completely blocked in by his own pieces. So I just wanted to put this on the board so you would have a mental picture of this. Um, this can happen uh, in these uh, flank openings where you uh, haven't moved the pawns in front of your king. It has no flight squares. It can't run anywhere. And uh, opening up this e-file is a big disaster in these cases. So uh, if we back up after uh, knight takes e5 and queen to e7, um, you can't move the knight really. Uh, you've got to try and defend it with f4. And you get this kind of uh, awkward structure that... Uh, Black can take advantage of d4, kicking the knight. Knight to d3. Ah, after after uh, the f pawn is moved, now there's a uh, now there's a flight square for the king, so it's no longer checkmate here. Um, bishop to f5 is a good move. F5 rather. And. Um, Black just has a, a decent game here, so you don't want to wander into this kind of thing. So uh, the moral of the story is don't don't grab that pawn because of the move uh, queen to e7. So after knight d4, the main line is taking the knight, and that's what I showed in the last video. So while we're on the four knights variation here, um, after the knight comes out, uh, g3, although it's the most common move, is not the only move. There's other ways to play. There's a uh, the idea of playing uh, a3 here is kind of interesting because that will prevent the bishop b4 uh, uh, attack against this knight, which uh, you saw was common in many variations. So that's an idea. Another idea is to play uh, e3 here and uh, just uh, try and build up into the in the center. You have to build up a little bit slowly. It's it's premature to follow e3 with d4 right away, um, but you can you can build towards that and try and go for more of a central strategy. Um, so those are those are different ways to play from this position. Um, but let's go back to the beginning. Uh, what I wanted to talk about in this video was the uh, symmetrical defense to the English. So c4, the symmetrical defense is c5. It's another way of avoiding um, uh, transposing into a queen's pawn opening. At least you won't get into a queen's pawn opening right away. Um, so you're keeping it in uniquely uh, English uh, channels. And what's interesting about this is you can uh, continue in a symmetrical mode, just copying your opponent's moves for a long time. So uh, the main uh, knight move here is knight f3. Now notice when uh, when black had replied when black, when black had replied e5 instead of c5, the main knight move was this knight move because uh, knight to c3 was the main move, preventing the knight from advancing before playing knight f3. Um, also going after the light squares. Knight c3 could be played here, of course, but uh, the most popular move is knight f6, and that just, uh, I guess, stops black from advancing his pawn. Um, and then knight f6, the symmetrical response. And now knight c3, the most common reply. And now um, knight c6 is not the most common reply here, but it is 
a way to play. So let's uh, go ahead and put it on the board. Um, actually, I'll, I'll just mention it. I'm going to talk about this position later. The, the move e6 is the most, not e5, the move e6 is the most popular move in this position, and that leads to uh, a hedgehog defense, and we'll take a look at that in a future video. So I'm going to pass over that move for now. Uh, knight c6. And now we've got, once again, four knights out. And to distinguish it from the English four knights, this is called the symmetrical four knights variation. So we've got a symmetrical English with c4, c5, and we've got all four knights out. And now um, it's always an interesting question when to break the symmetry. Right here is, is a point where many white players will play uh, d4 and uh, try and break the symmetry at that point, or also uh, e3 is a move here. But let's uh, continue along the symmetrical line. So uh, g3, and uh, right here also is a place where it's very popular to break the symmetry with d4. So, so the players are not, uh, in general, they're not, they're not uh, wanting to stay on the symmetric line for too long, but, but it is an opening line that continues. Uh, uh, I, th I think it's called the ultra-symmetrical variation, where they just keep playing uh, the copycat moves and uh, can go on for quite a long time. D4 right here is also an option, but castles, top choice, castles, and we're still at a significant uh, number of games in the database. And uh, that D4 there finally breaks the symmetry. This is the most popular spot at which to break the symmetry, actually. Um, D4 is commonly played here, but you can uh, continue. D3, the second choice in the database. And uh, D6. And I'll just uh, follow this. This is actually now in the in the ultra-symmetrical variation, I think, where they really are just uh, continuing to copy each other. Rook B1. So, also this shows uh, a typical strategy with the English, which is uh, this white square control. Notice these um, line of pawns are on light squares. This knight is controlling the light squares, and this bishop is controlling the light squares. And uh, of course, since it's a symmetrical position, black has a dark squared strategy. Um, but white's got the first move here and maybe has some slight edge here. So rook b1, rook b8, uh, b4, and finally at this point, uh, uh, C takes B4, we, we start to break the strategy. Although, it's symmetry. We break the symmetry at this point by uh, exchanging. And actually, uh, it's a good point. There's always uh, some point when you're playing this kind of copycat, there's always some point at which it's no longer good to copy your opponent's moves. And this is one of them. So this move here is not particularly good because after uh, C takes, if you take back, you're just losing a pawn over here. That exchange opened up the rook, and uh, your knight's ready to grab that pawn. So, uh, so you don't want to continue the symmetry indefinitely, but it is interesting how long you can keep it up. But you have to uh, have a sharp eye, and a lot of times it's one of these pawn breaks is what is going to break up the symmetry, and then the normal move here is to take and uh, play from this position. Actually, you can actually you can get back into a symmetric position by playing b5 here. <laughs> Uh, just to put it on, takes, takes, and uh, at this point uh, we, we're pretty low on the database, so not, not many games of the database from this position, but it is <laughs> still a completely symmetric position that you can play from. Um, you have to be a little bit careful here, I, I should uh, warn you, this, this knight is loose, this knight is loose, but um, there's no immediate tactics, it turns out, in this position, so... Uh, <clears throat> well, any of the tactics that are there can be dealt with. So it's it's about an even position. It's not like uh, black has done anything wrong. There's still some small edge to white from his opening advantage. So that is the ultra-symmetrical English. Um, and also wanted to show that just because uh, it shows that typical light-squared strategy that the white player has in English. So I'm going all the way back to the beginning, and let's go forward and explore some of those places where we could break the symmetry in the symmetrical English. So knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6. I think I'm going to stick with the uh, symmetrical four knights for this video. Um, but right here, instead of uh, g3, d4 is a, is a very uh, popular alternative. And uh, black will take, and knight takes. And we'll get this kind of position. Um, black has to decide at this point how to develop his bishop and uh, the two main moves here are uh, e6 and g6. 
e6 I think is the most popular in this position and with the idea of building up towards uh, d5 later as well as opening up the square for the bishop uh, white at this point open up the diagonal for the bishop white at this point uh, can choose between uh, a3 or g3 or uh, knight knight to b5 is an interesting way to try and punish punish uh, black for his light squared weaknesses so let's take a brief look at that knight to d5 um, but d5 can be played here hmm, the chess engine is recommending bishop b4 even um, but d5 is a move so just just opening up uh, the queen onto these squares so um, black has good control of the the squares inside his camp that this uh, knight is trying to hit bishop to f4 trying to reinforce and uh, the control over these squares and now e5 hitting the bishop is uh, is good for black so uh, that that knight adventure can be played differently I mean bishop to uh, bishop to f4 is not uh, a forced move there but uh, after this exchange and yeah, maybe this is the best way to play it knight takes and you would get an okay position the uh, the knight is maybe a little out of play but it's still a potential nuisance over there and uh, white can play e4 and kick this knight around too and so both both players will be uh, playing against the awkward position of their opponent's knights um, so let's back up yeah let's go so that we broke the symmetry with uh, d4 black takes knight takes and um, e6 is the most common move here g6 um, goes into kind of a symmetrical setup so e6 and then um, like I said a3 could be played or um, g3 is the most common move actually and uh, queen b6 putting some pressure on the knight it's uh, attacked twice and only uh, defended once and uh, very typically for the English um, the knight just retreats a lot of times the player with the English is looking for a position where uh, he keeps all the material on the board and he's just doing a, a lot of maneuvering with his pieces so this uh, square in b3 is is hardly ever a good square for the knight but the knight is going to uh, reroute and come back into the game through some other means so some of these squares are, are potential potential uh, landing spots for the knight um, and he'll get back into the game in the meantime uh, uh, white can play knight e5 here and black black can play knight e5 here the engine thinks that's a good point a uh, good place to play this move putting some pressure on the uh, the c pawn and um, white plays the move e4 there so the bishop defends the pawn and he gets this uh, Maroxy bind type of position where he's got a clamp on uh, d5 but uh, black is set up he's already got a pawn on e6 and he's has a potential maybe after some preparation of playing the move uh, d5 there to bust up the center so uh, the play continues from here actually the the most common move here is a bishop to b4 and a queen to e2 defending the pawn i was about to play it on c2 because that's a common reaction but actually uh, the pin there uh, left this pawn hanging so you needed to defend it with the queen queen e2 and then um, d6 so this is actually a pretty solid position and in this position white has a choice of uh, kicking the knight with f4 or uh, playing bishop to d2 to break the pin um, and play continues from here it's a pretty even position and kind of kind of an interesting one notice that uh, like I mentioned earlier all the pieces are still on the board there have been no exchanges just uh, one pair of pawns has been traded off so uh, an interesting and complicated game can ensue from here so let's back up take it from the beginning again c4 c5 knight f3 knight f6 and knight c3 knight c6 and now uh, breaking the symmetry with d4 is one option which we just looked at or uh, continuing with the g3 and uh, allowing black to break the symmetry now, now black of course if he wants to can continue with them um, g6 maintaining the symmetry but uh, I wanted to look at uh, the most popular choice here is uh, d5 break the symmetry right away and um, now there's a couple ways for um, 
for white to respond. Actually, if he plays d4 here, then we actually transpose. So I'll put this on the board, d4, e6. And um, this uh, looks a lot like a Tarash defense <laughs> to the uh, Queen's Gambit declined. So uh, I'm sure, yeah, after a couple couple pieces get exchanged, we'll, after the bishop goes to this square, we'll be in, uh, after bishop g2, we'll be in a... Uh, a Tarash defense to the Queen's Gambit. So I'm not going to look at this position any further. Um, but to stay in English uh, territory, take the pawn. And uh, knight takes. Now bishop to g2. And right here, um, the knight drops back to c7 in most cases. Kind of an interesting response. But it looks like uh, black in this case wants to keep uh, more material on the board. And maybe... Um, take advantage of some extra center influence. He's got the opportunity to play uh, e5 perhaps at some point after that move and try and uh, grab control of the center. So interesting kind of a reversal of roles where, where uh, black is trying to grab control of the center uh, with knight c7 or just a simple move uh, e6, just supporting the knight there so it doesn't have to worry about sudden discoveries and attacks. And um, well, white would uh, castle here. And bishop to e7 and d4. And uh, there's a reason why I'm continuing this after black castles here. And the most common move is uh, knight takes, pawn takes, and then pawn takes, and bishop takes. And uh, if you've watched uh, my videos recently, I, I just uploaded a video of an over the board game I played, and I called it the uh, anti Botvinnik system. <laughs> And um, it's uh, I reached exactly this position in the game by a different move order. I played my uh, my uh, d5 break even earlier, but it's just interesting that uh, it shows how many uh, different ways the uh, there are there, how many different transpositions there are in the English opening. So a lot of different opening moves will lead to the same positions or the same kinds of positions. And this is one kind of position you can get out of it. It's like a Tarash. If you've ever played the Tarash defense to the Queen's Gambit declined, it's similar except that one pair of knights has been traded. And it actually makes black's job a little bit easier. Um, so it's easier to defend that pawn without the uh, extra knight around. Now my opponent in that game came up with a very interesting maneuver. He played his knight to e1, to d3, and then to f4 as a way of putting more pressure on my d-pawn. And uh, while well, the game continued, he had, he had some pressure. Um, but uh, it eventually ended in a draw. I don't know if he ever had a winning advantage. His, his knight from f4 went on a kingside adventure that wasn't uh, well-timed, so uh, he lost a little bit of tempo there. So he had, he had some pressure and maybe some chances. Um, but the main move here in this position is bishop to g5, hitting the queen. And uh, the main response from black is f6, just blocking it. And... Uh, you know, it's one of those double-edged moves again. You're, you're opening up some squares towards your king, so it's a bit uncomfortable to play that. But it does uh, force the bishop back, and um, it looks like this position is, is still about even. So, interesting. Um, so my opponent's moving over with the knight. Um, it actually was made, made a lot of sense. Uh, the other way to play this is uh, queen c2, just taking advantage of the uh, position of the bishop there on c5, which is a bit loose. So uh, let's back up uh, to where we got to that. And um, let's go through the symmetrical one more time. About to, about to wrap this up, but uh, just to, uh, to show it again. So c4, c5, knight f3. Now, I, I've been showing knight f3 all the time, but of course knight c3 could have been played first. Um, that would allow the move e5, but a lot of times we're just going to transpose back into the same position anyway. Um, now knight f6 is the main move here, knight c3, and knight c6. So this is the symmetrical four knights, and um, d4, as I've shown, is uh, a way to break the symmetry early, and uh, I think it's pretty popular. Also, uh, the immediate g3 is uh, the a main move here, and also uh, e3. But uh, we're continuing, white continues the symmetry. And um, black can break the symmetry with, um, with the move d4. He can continue the symmetry with the move g6, or he can break the symmetry with the move uh, d4. But he can also break the d5, I mean. 
You can also break the symmetry with the move e6. And uh, this is going to be yet another example of how we can transpose. So, so watch this. After e6, then the main idea with e6 is to support the move d5. And um, after you take, um, if you take back with the pawn right here, uh, white can play d5. And this is the Tarash defense to the queen's gambit decline. So we have completely transposed. The bishop is already here on this square. And, uh, and the, all four knights are still on the board. So this uh, defense, I used to play it as black. Um, it's not considered very good anymore. So most players uh, don't really want to allow that transposition. So they take with the knight here. And, uh, and then the main move is just a castle. Bishop e7 to prepare castling. d4. Castles. Uh, knight takes knight. Pawn takes knight. Pawn takes pawn. Bishop takes pawn. And voila, there we are again. We got uh, to exactly the same position I just showed you that I uh, played in my recent game. So once again, an example of how these different uh, openings can uh, transpose one into the other from the English. So it's a very um, <laughs> subtle opening in a way because you can get these different transpositions. You have to be kind of aware of what kind of opening you're getting into. Um, but this is a, a reasonable way to play it for both sides. The, uh, you saw that game I played ended in a draw. Um, but, uh, but there are some winning chances along the way. Neither of us played uh, the best moves at all time. So anyway, that wraps up uh, this video on the uh, symmetrical defenses. I think I will take a look at the uh, hedgehog uh, in the next video. So uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned for that one, and I will see you again soon. Bye.